Are you interested in making your MuleSoft application run more efficiently? In this video, we're going to talk about streaming, what it is, how to identify it, how to use it, and the impact it has on our application's memory usage. So our MuleSoft applications can run on a smaller, less expensive vCore and be more stable while executing. So I'm inside my AnyPoint Studio and I'm working on version 6.4.4 with the Mule Runtime 3.9.2 Enterprise Edition. And I've set up a bunch of flows here that I kind of want to walk through today. So in the first flow here, what we're going to do is just kind of show you how to tell if you are streaming or if you've consumed the payload and the kind of the differences in between. In our first flow here, which we call consuming, we have an input file, which is going to pull one of our flat files that we have on our local machine. And it's going to show us the difference between a stream and holding the whole payload. So let's talk about the files we're going to be using today. So the files that we have or I've set up are just basically um, garbage data, but of different sizes. This is an example of one of the files. It's just different letters. There's 990 characters of each one, and it just repeats. So for this one here, I call it 0005, and it holds because it has 500 lines of code and I've set up a whole bit, bunch of them so I have one that has this 001 here this has a thousand lines 4,000 lines this is the one we just looked at with 500 uh, 10,000 lines and you can start seeing they get bigger in size so the 10,000 lines has about 10 megabytes of data in it because I do want to show we have some um, some values that are, I really want to show the difference between the to two of them so I need some larger files to do that so in this first flow here let's go ahead and run it we can start talking about it and for this case I'm going to take the smallest one we have which is 500 lines and I'm going to drop it into the folder that it's waiting for which is the consuming flow so we're going to drop it in there and it picked it up right away so as you can see here my payload is of type receiver file input stream. So to tell that we are holding a stream right now, it's the word stream is in this, but this file type or class name uh, might not be familiar to most people. So if I do a quick Google search for it, if we come up with this old mule docs that has the file in here. So back in the day, MuleSoft used to be open source and some of that is still on the internet. So if I open up here, it looks like someone has one of the jars for mule 3.5 publicly available and the skeleton is not going to change so we see the receiver file input stream and we can see that it's a file input stream which if i go up to the imports essentially is just the normal java class that we use for streaming data so we're right now holding what's called a stream so if i was to even go payload I would not be able to get the values of the stream, the characters of the file. That's a good time to talk about what the stream does. Essentially what a stream does is there's an intermediate buffer. So if this was back in the day when you wanted to uh, load a file in, if you have to load up that whole file into memory and then from there inside memory, you can play quickly with the data of the file. Well, they found out that that wasn't very efficient on your server resources. So for example, if you're loading a big file that's 100 megs, we would now have to hold that 100 megs in your memory in order to work with it. So they came up with this idea of a stream where they say, let's have a buffer, which is a fixed set of character length. Let's load up that buffer from the file. So let's say it takes the first 200 lines to fill up that buffer from your file. They say, why don't you work with that 200 lines and then when you get to the end of it, we'll give you the next 200 lines. So depending on your application, you may not need the whole file at once. And this way, you're only holding in memory those 200 lines. And this comes very important when dealing with running your Mule application on CloudHub. Because CloudHub is, you pay licensing for it based on what's called a vCore. And each vCore has a number of bytes or gigabytes, depending how large you get, that you can use and each higher up is more expensive and they quickly get very pricey. So as good developers, we want to take responsibility for the cost of running the project in production 
and make sure that our program is running efficiently on the smallest memory footprint possible. So if I was to step over here, what we're going to do is a thing called consuming the stream. In order to do that, one way is printing out the payload. So that action will consume the stream. And let me show you how that looks like. So you'll see now the type of the payload switched to a string. It successfully completed. So it printed out the whole payload. And if I was to take this and put it into a notepad, we're at 800 lines minus the server start line. So all 500 lines got printed out. And in this display window, you can actually see now the value of my file. And you have to be careful because if you're printing a very large file out, this could freeze your AnyPoint Studio. So that's why we're only using the 500 line ones. And because we've lost our stream and we can now access all the characters of the file, we have now have it all loaded into memory. So we're now using more memory on the second logger than we did with the first logger. And that's what I want to show you with this first flow. How you can tell if you're holding the stream or whether you're holding the whole payload. And now in the second flow, I want to show you the actual memory values differences between holding a stream versus holding the whole payload. So in this case, we're going to use a much larger file so that you can clearly see the differences in numbers. And then it's going to come in as a stream and then we're going to consume it using the object to string. This is the exact same thing as we did with the logger, but we're not going to print it to the log because printing 10,000 lines to the log is going to take forever. So we're going to do another activity which makes us lose the stream and load the whole payload into memory. And then we're just going to exit out of it. This is just a, a logger that says we're finished. So we're going to put our breakpoint here. We have set up a profile pro application called Java Visual VM. And this is going to show us the memory statistics of our running application. So let's go into debug. Now the application started and you'll see we have a new process ID, which is our running application. And if we go to monitor, take away this, you can see here on the right side, our used heap, which is running at 300 megabytes, as well as our used heap, which is at 600. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drop a very large file into our flow and let's drop a really big one. So we're going to drop the 100,000 lines and this one is 95 megabytes big. So let's copy and paste it. It is detected, we're picked up, we're currently in the middle of our flow and we have our file input stream type. And if we go back to the profiler, you'll see here that it's only gone up from 31 to 39, so like eight megabytes. So clearly we don't have the whole file. If the thing's 50 and we're only gone up nine, we're not holding the whole file. But what we're gonna do here now is consume the payload, which is gonna load the whole thing into memory. So we're going to step across it. You'll see here, I'm no longer holding a stream. I'm holding a string. I'm not going to press value because it's going to crash my machine trying to hold it. And let's see what happened to memory. Memory jumped up significantly. So it jumped up from 350 to 520. And the heap size jumped up from 620 to 890. So it's quite a large increase and if we step across we're finished and the neat thing that I realized while setting this up is that you can tell that the memory wasn't released so it's going to take a while for the Java collector to jump in and for MuleSoft to release some resources that it may be caching maybe some resources that it hasn't enabled for garbage collection so not only do you get the initial spike it's actually a longer spike as well not just for the duration of your flow. So let's cancel this. So now we're going to deal with a more practical case and how designing your flow two different ways creates a big difference in the memory usage. So instead of a flow that does absolutely nothing, what we 
What we have instead is we added a transform message, which transforms our input, which is a flat file, line by line, into a JSON. And then we're going to write that to a file. So design this probably from what we just learned, is we try to want to do this flow without consuming the stream at all. So we have a logger, which doesn't consume it. We have the transform message, which DataWeave can handle streams and produces streams as well. And then we're going to output a file and then just a simple logger. So the idea is we'll never hold the whole payload in memory, even when we're outputting it. So essentially we'll be reading the file in parts, writing it in parts. And so at no stage are we holding the whole payload. And then we're going to show this through the profile. So in this case, we're going to drop 50K lines for 47.5 megabytes. There's a new process. Again, we're around 300 megabytes in the idle application of used heap. And we're going to drop the 50K We have the file input stream at the transform message. We've gone through our transformation. We now have um, its type JSON. We're now holding a file seekable stream, which is what comes out of a data weave transformation. Now we're going to write to the file system. Again, seekable stream. And then we're going to step out. Now let's see what the memory usage was. A very little jump from 315 to 325. I don't know what happened here. This is probably just some bad data. And then it went, it stayed at about 325. So it got up, jumped about 17 megabytes, and then stayed up there. And now let's say we wanted to do this in an inefficient way. So say, for example, we no longer want to have a stream. We're going to do our object to string. Put a breakpoint. Go to our profile. Resting at 300 megabytes of used heap. Now let's drop our 50K again. So before the object to string, we're at the file input stream. We're at a string now, so we've consumed the string. We essentially have the whole payload now inside memory. We're still going to transform it. We're still going to write it to a file, and then we're going to exit. Now let's see what happened on memory. Essentially, what happened was what we expected. We, we added about 100 and 30 megabytes of used heap. Um, our heap size jumped about 400 megabytes. And now, for whatever reason, we're still holding it, whether the garbage collector hasn't, hasn't kicked in yet or whether our resources haven't been sent to be eligible for a garbage collection yet. And that's a big difference when you're dealing with um, runtime environments on Cloud Hub, where you're you're trying to squeeze every 0.1 vCore out of your application. So the takeaway from this flow is how coding the same business logic two different ways will have a dramatically different memory footprint depending on whether you can maintain the stream and don't consume it anywhere. And we're using one large file just as an example to show the difference. And so even if you aren't using large files, if you're using smaller but many more of them, all of the small memory footprints, as you're seeing, it's not getting released, make a difference. So if you keep inching up your memory by using smaller but more frequently files or even HTTP inbound payload, so even if you're using JSON or XML, the resources aren't getting released right away. So if you have a high frequently API, you could be walking up your memory to where you'll start exceeding the resources allocated to you and having issues with your application. 
And the last flow here is just another example of what's happening behind the scenes. And I'm just adding it because I have a tendency to make these videos go on way too long. In this case, I just want to show you how the stream buffer replenishes itself from the file when it needs more information. So I've moved now the file that we're going to pull from being on my local machine to an FTP server. So the FTP server is going to pick up the file. And here I have a bunch of loggers. And I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to show you. So we're going to put a breakpoint on this first one here. We're going to do um, a 10K file on my FTP server. So the 10K file is 9.5 megabytes and it's already kicked off. Again, we're using an input stream and we're getting some errors here just because I'm debugging through FTP. So this is a socket input stream, a little bit different, but we're still receiving data from a buffer, this time just in bytes. And then we're gonna step across. And now the surprise here, I'm going to delete the file from the FTP server. So if the file from FTP was completely loaded into memory, this wouldn't make a difference because we would have the whole file and we would need to go back to the server. But because we're looking at streams and what we've just learned, we know that we only have a buffer size portion of the payload. What we're gonna to try to do now is we're gonna to try to print out the whole payload that we have and see what happens. So we step across, we print the payload, nothing happened. We've consumed it though, we have no errors, so it doesn't look like anything bad happened, but let me show you what we printed out. Let's take off all the startup information. So we only have 2,700 lines, but this file was 10,000 lines. So you could think about, well, where's the rest of it? Well, we never actually got it. The portion that we had in the buffer was only we could access it because it was deleted from the server and we can, so the buffer can no longer get replenished by pulling more data from the file on the FTP server. So hopefully these four examples give you a better understanding of what is a stream what does it look like in my mule code to have a stream versus having the whole payload? What are the effects of having one versus the other on your memory? And a more real world example where we showed how we can code the same business logic, one with maintaining the stream and the other one with consuming it and the impact on memory that had. If you have any comments or need some more clarifications on any of these examples, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And if you want more MuleSoft tutorial videos, please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.